iPadOS 26 is here, and this year Apple is leaning harder than ever into making the iPad feel more like a Mac. From window controls to a brand new menu bar, to upgrades in multitasking and file management, the lines between iPad and Mac honestly have never been blurrier. So we're going to go through all of the new features that make your iPad feel more Mac-like than ever before. But before we get into everything, if you can, please subscribe to the channel so you don't miss all of our content that we have coming up in the next month. There's tons of new products and releases and just tons of videos to go over. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss those videos. Now, right away, when you update, you'll be greeted with a setup screen that asks you if you want to keep using iPad the traditional way with full screen apps or if you'd like to try out the new windowed apps mode. Don't worry, if you skip past this, you can always head into settings under multitasking and gestures, and you can switch between full screen, stage manager, or this new Mac OS style, I'm putting in quotes, windowing mode. There's also the stage manager control center toggle that you can long press and swap between these two modes on the fly. Once you launch an app by default, it's still in full screen, but if you look closely in the bottom right corner, you'll now see a little resizing handle. Just drag that corner and suddenly you can scale your app window however you'd like. Want multiple windows floating side by side? Go for it. You want to tile them neatly? Just flick an app to the left or right and it'll snap into place. iPadOS 26 even lets you split the screen into thirds or quarters, which makes juggling apps feel far closer to what you'd expect on something like a Mac. And of course, Apple has also brought over its iconic traffic light buttons from Mac OS. So up in the corner of every window, you'll see the red, yellow, and green indicators. You can Tap red to close, just like you would on the Mac, or yellow to minimize, and green to expand. But some real magic here happens when you long press on the indicators. You can actually do this on the green button, or just go up to the entire cluster as a whole and long press, and you'll see the options to resize, fill, and move, and even quickly arrange windows into halves, thirds, or quarters with one click. It's such a simple thing, but it instantly makes iPad multitasking much more approachable and powerful. Now let's talk expose. If you swipe up and hold, instead of the traditional app switcher, you now get kind of a hybrid app switcher expose view. All of your open apps, whether they're stacked, resized, or tiled, are just neatly displayed all right there for you to choose from. It makes it a lot easier to glance at everything that you've got going on, and quickly jump into the workspace that you need. Another big Mac-inspired addition is the new menu bar. It's hidden at the very top of the screen, but you can either drag your pointer up or swipe down to reveal it. This is the same dynamic menu bar that you know from macOS. So depending on the app you're in, you'll see menus like File, Edit, View, Window, and Help. In Safari, you'll get things like Bookmarks and History, and in other apps, it'll be specific to that app's workflow. It's a small detail again, but it really just adds to the sense that iPad is more crossing into that hybrid territory with your Mac. But Apple didn't stop at multitasking. They've also supercharged the Files app. You can now create custom folders with colored icons or even emojis so that you can visually organize your projects. There's a new list view with resizable columns, collapsible folders, and extra filters so that you can actually see more information at a glance. And perhaps my favorite little tweak here is that you can now set default apps for different file types. So if you want PDFs to always open in third-party apps instead of Apple's, you can do that right here from the new Get Info panel. You can also right-click on any folder and choose Add to Dock, just like on the Mac. Once it's in the dock, long press and you'll get the option to view the folder as a grid or fan layout. Again, stop me if you've heard this before, but it's all very Mac OS-inspired touches. Apple even brought over the Preview app, which was strictly just a Mac app. Now it's on the iPad and your iPhone, and you can open up PDFs or images, you can annotate them with the Apple Pencil, you can add signatures and perform quick edits. It's the same tool that we've grown to know and love on the Mac, and now it fills a really big gap for people using the iPad for productivity. And finally, one of the most desktop class changes to me is true background tasks. Until now, if you were exporting a video, let's say in Final Cut Pro, or moving around large files, you basically had to babysit the app until it was done. You couldn't back away from it. With iPadOS 26, exports and other heavy tasks just keep processing in the background. That means you can now hop over to Safari, Notes, Mail, etc. You can keep working on your project while it finishes up doing what it needs to do in the background. So yeah, iPadOS 26 doesn't just bring quality of life updates, but it really kind of shapes the iPad into a more capable desktop, laptop-like class machine. Between multitasking improvements, the new menu bar, 
the advanced file management system, et cetera, all of those things kind of repackage the iPad into more of a computer than it ever has been before. But what do you think? Does this new direction make you more likely to use your iPad as a laptop replacement, or do you still feel like it's missing a lot of key features? Let me know in the comments down below. This is Mdale with Mac Rumors. Thanks so much for watching, and I hope to see you around in the next video.